skin and are suitable for people of colored skin like us Asians. A lot of the skin clinics use medifacials. Medifacials are used for skin rejuvenation. There are popular ones like the hydrofacial. Hydrofacial is a liquid skin polishing treatment and it has different steps in it like cleansing, exfoliation, extraction of the blackheads and whiteheads and then finally hydrates the skin. Similarly, there are other systems available like the oxygen infusion system and this essentially infuses nutrients into the skin. We also have something called the jet peel system and this particular system uses gas, oxygen or air to peel the outer layers of the skin. For scars and stretch marks, we have treatments such as the fractional laser or the derma roller treatment. Uh, laser energy in, in, in the fractional laser is fractionated with, and this fractionated laser beam treats only the damaged skin, a little small amount of damaged skin. This helps to limit the downtime without any um, side effects of course, at the same time treating the skin and building collagen from under the skin. Derma roller does the same thing, in fact, it's a micro medical skin needling. This also causes micro wounding which, in, which further causes collagen production. In laser hair removal, as we all know, is a permanent method of getting rid of unwanted hairs. You see permanent hair reduction about six to eight sittings. Um, the regrowth is often finer and lighter and can be treated on all areas of skin. Recently, we have, over the years, we've noticed an improvement in the laser hair removal systems. We have the super laser hair removal systems, which are not only safe and efficient, but are also suitable for dark skinned and um, they take a very little time to complete the treatment. Often a full body laser hair removal can be done in just under three hours time. Body contouring and spot fat reduction is being offered by a lot of skin clinics as well. There is a lot of different technologies that uh, you th that use body contouring. There is the ultra lipo, which uses the focused ultrasonic waves, which destroy the fat cells. Similarly, there is also cool sculpting that you might all have heard, which uses a patented system of cooling or freezing the fat down, that that then kills the fat cells. There's other methods as well, like endermology and radio frequency. Hair transplantation, as we all know, there is two methods of hair transplantation, mainly the strip method and the FUE method. Here the follicular units are either extracted individually with the help of an FUE machine or they're taken out in the form of a strip from the back of the head and are placed where they're required. Today we have seen, we are seeing better grafting methods, um, better uptake of the graft, there's use of stereoscopic microscopes, there's video dissection going on, there is sapphire needles which cause minimal injury to the skin, there is better techniques, we've also heard of robotic hair transplantation, there's, so there's quite a lot of, de lot of development going on there. ERP therapy is very interesting. ERP therapy, also known as the platelet-rich plasma, is extracted from a person's own blood. The platelets are injected or, or are applied after causing wounding of the scalp. This is a completely non-surgical procedure. This helps to promote hair growth and as well as thickens the thinning hair. We are also seeing electricity as a technology in cosmetic medicine. We've all known that electricity is used to remove unwanted growths and to stop bleeding during surgery. But from ancient times, it has been used and was used to improve muscle tone, also known as your galvanic facials. It is now being used for skin tightening in the form of radio frequency. So the neck sagging, the jowl, the cheek contour, eyelid, the row drooping can all be corrected with the help of radio frequency. We're, we're seeing skin lifting as well with fractionated radio frequency technology. So radio frequency energy can also be fractionated just like a laser can and this 
in fact has lesser side effects than a laser because it is independent of one's color. Electroporation again uses electricity. Here it delivers the better penetration of the skin nutrients and growth factors that is provided with the high voltage. The most interesting thing that is um, still being researched is into the field of cosmeceuticals where bioelectricity is being used. So bioelectricity is being introduced and this seems to alter the cellular activity of skin. It has been studied that aging skin shows very low bioelectricity. This low bioelectricity causes poor wound healing and has low production of collagen. So this would be an interesting thing to look to. Some of the other fields um, of technology and research are in the areas of stem cell, the use of stem cell technology in facial rejuvenation, and in fat grafting, where fat is used as an alternative to filler to plump and volumize. There is the nanostructure delivery system in cosmeceuticals, this is a very controlled and timed release of the active ingredients in the products. Sunscreens are being used in daily wear products now and with often a higher SPF. Peptides and growth factors are being incorporated into cosmeceuticals more and more as these are as these are have been noticed to induce collagen. Fractionated laser energy, as we have seen, targets small percentage of damaged skin, which and this causes not only lesser downtime, but is very effective in producing collagen. There have there have been changes with the vascular lasers as well, <coughs> especially the pulse dye lasers, which treat visible broken blood vessels on the face. And now we have lasers that are able to do this without actually bruising the skin. We are also looking into lasers for skin tightening and lasers that can target the oil glands to reduce acne more efficiently. The, uh, some of the other technologies are tattoo removal with a Q-switched and IPL and infrared um, waves as well. These are also being used in cosmetic medicine. So that's all I have for you. Thank you. very much for giving a very wonderful presentation on skin care innovations. Do you have any, I can take one question if you could ask. All right. And I have the moment to please. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to have the award presentation at around 7.30, and Chief Guest is on his way to the venue. It's my proud privilege to invite Dr. Nankishore Lad, considered to be the father of Indian orthopedics. He has been very kind enough uh, to be with me in this particular uh, program and is going to give a very interesting uh, perception, not on medical terms, but being a very renowned orthopedic surgeon who the entire world acknowledges that recognition. He has been very humble. He is going to talk about today when I interacted with him last, the community participation and the affordable medicine, how it is reaching to our people. He doesn't need an introduction. With humbly, I would like to request Dr. Lord to please come on stage, sir. Please. Padma Sri, Dr. Sri Lord, please. Mr. Satya Brahma, honorable members who are present here, ladies and gentlemen. I am uh, an orthopedic surgeon, but basically I am a health worker. And I'm really concerned about uh, what's happening today. And we feel that, I know that you all belong to big industry. And I'm aware of the fact the industry 
helps in promoting education because I've been associated with holding various programs how to promote the education. Today I'm going to talk about something very different and where I'm convinced and which I will quote at the end. Healthcare has become very expensive, so is the education, and you have no control on it. And what can we do being in 50 years in this business? I realize that I'll share with you my experience of last 50 years. Today, the problem in healthcare difficulty is, is it accessible? Is it available? Is it affordable? And if it's affordable, is it accountable? And anywhere you have anything which is not accountable, it doesn't work. That brings us a question. Is it the job of government to do healthcare systems or education? What's the system's problem? If you see our hospital, it is based on a shloka. Rubnanam Vedina Shaya, Shipram Charo Gehitave, Shushrusha, Shushruta Bhuyat, Sve Nishkarma Seve. For the benefit of the sick and relieve its suffering, let's follow tenets of Shushrusha to offer relief in health care with all the help with adequate rewards. So our aim was to free the patients of all the ailments. We, we carry out the work initiated by great surgeon Shishruta. This is Dr. Ranjive, who way back felt that it is very essential to offer quality health care at an affordable price health care by self-participation, I'm convinced about it. Anything which is given free has no value. There's no free lunch in life. So you should cater to local middle class and even upper middle class population. Initially, doctors were taken from the municipal hospitals. It was founded as a society in 1966, registered in 64, under the Maharashtra Cooperative Societies Act. So foundation stone was laid by nobody other than Y.B. Chauhan in 1966. The key people in the establishment of Shishrusha Hospital was Prime Minister Mrs. Gandhi, traveled all over from Delhi to start this small hospital, that time of 60 beds, because he felt it is the citizens who will take care of their institution. It was inaugurated by her in 1969. So what I am talking about an institution which is 43 years old and which has still served the people. What's our objective? As the health of the patient is more important than money he has in his pocket and I still believe in it. Some notable objective hospitals there are as follows. To provide best health facilities at an affordable price, to provide at a concession medical facilities for prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of diseases for the members and their family. You are a part of the hospital. To provide fixed tariff for the members in special rooms on procedures and operations. And to provide educational facilities to enlighten the citizens about the care of their health. And I can tell you one difference. A member in my hospital gets a total knee or total hip replacement done in a super deluxe class. A private patient is charged 75,000 lakh rupees. But if he's a member, he cannot charge more than 35,000. Imagine, can you have the returns of one-time investment and lifetime returns? What are the benefits to the members? Being partners in the noble venture, members have the following privileges. Priority in admission, discount to members, discount to their registered family members, right to vote representatives to the board of directors, and right to participate in the regulation of the hospital. These members are elected for five years. They are all from all walks of life, not only doctors. So this is not a doctor's cooperative. This is a citizen's cooperative. They are committed to advising the staff of the hospital to deliver optimum health care to all patients. This is what I call as accountability. They interact with other members to run the hospital in the true cooperative spirit. Let me share that we do have partners. And in that delivery, if you see a board, the emergency care is run by 
cannot say state bank of india they have funds which they give from 10% of their profit for the community health and education and we were given 15 lakhs way back to run the mrc medical service and here we take everybody anybody knocked out on the road is taken care of we don't ask him whether you have money or you have no money and we have best of the facilities and our medical care services and we resuscitate the patient and send him just don't pack him off our services is consultant doctor attends hopefully twice a week and we run it from 8 o'clock to 10 pm in the night for most 14 hours you know the philanthropists came forward when we knew that this is a unique experiment so multi jangal of the lal center gave us 1 45 lakhs and we have the imaging center a digital x-ray machine a ct scan and an ultrasound and last year because we help people they gave us one more ultrasound in our cardiology what are the facilities today there are a lot of diseases related to pollution the elderly people living who have chest problems who have breathing problems and also young children and students who suffer from bronchitis and we felt that we must have strong system to assess the lung problems and lung diseases what did we start for to diagnose the patient of asthma chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and intestinal lung disease to screen students from primary secondary schools and colleges for detection of asthma and advise them to establish cardio pulmonary exercise testing for cardiac and pulmonary rehabilitation and to establish basic assessment system for the sportsmen a lot of people want to run for the marathon and they fall they collapse so here we tell them you are fit to run and in case you have to run you can train yourself and to plan various physical training programs like running in the marathon now this is the facility which is unique there are only two in this mumbai but among the hospital this ours is the only hospital where this facility where we give you the report on your fitness how you are we do the neurological disorders a lot of elderly people so non normally chronological problems we are doing today our hospital can give state of art diagnosis even for stroke because we have the angiography machine the eye department is one of the most advanced departments where we do right from basic patient examination investigations hemodialysis peritoneal dialysis intermittent dialysis and in continuous dialysis in the process of thinking of having a kidney transplant unit but unless you get those funds and build it up just to start we have one of those does every hospital gives excellent pathology services we have state of art pathology and a blood bank feel that the patient should not turn around in the middle of life to get blood so another to cut the cost today the possibility of diagnostic which you can do as a day care we do these services as a day care where we do pre registration check up pre operative testing pre operative consent and check in the day of surgery and inquiries from the family and friends and we also do post operative care we are more concern about our pediatric services and we know so we now run neonatal services because parents get married late both of them are working 